All right, uh, there's a little prep work here. I'm going to show you all the tools that are required to do this. Uh, so your Creality printer came with your 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, a 2 millimeter Allen wrench, and a pair of side cutters. That's actually the only tools that we need to actually do the installation here. But uh, it is helpful to have a couple other tools. Um, these pair of pliers, uh, these are just simple needle nose pliers, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these real quick. Each one of these T-nuts has a spot in it for a uh, three millimeter nut, and we're just going to take that and, and place that in there like that. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, we just have to get it sitting in there. And we're just going to take our pliers and we're just going to squeeze that in place. And once we squeeze that in, uh, basically that's going to uh, give us something to screw against. Uh, so we're going to screw um, our uh, eight millimeter screws into the back side here, um, and then we're going to attach these to our filament guide tubes. Now our filament guide tubes, that brings me up to another spot here. Uh, the way we're going to build this is we're going to take a piece of the PTFE tube, so just a small section of it, and we're going to insert that into one end of the um, which either end you have. So just insert that all the way in. You will push it in until you find it. You'll see exactly how much you need to cut it. We'll use, we'll slide it black out and we'll use our straight edge uh, right against the edge here. And we're just going to slice it straight through. Now what that's going to do is that's going to give you just enough to keep inside of here. Once that's in there, you'll put the end back on and that will actually compress this in so that it doesn't slide. You don't want this to slide in either direction. Um, and then we're going to use our knife to, or our razor blade, just to come in and slice the edge of it on both sides here. And we're going to then come in and use our um, knife uh, blade here again to just trim this back. So just like that. And remove all of the part you don't need. Um, what that's going to do is that's going to leave a channel. Uh, that sticks up maybe one millimeter or so above the either edge. You don't have to get too precise with that. Uh, as long as it's down below half the height of the filament, you should be good. So when a filament comes through here, it's going to press down and it's going to ride in this channel um, and just go on through. And this is going to allow the friction pad to come in a little bit later on and just slide back and forth on there. Now I do want to show you a little caveat to watch out for, and I intentionally did it on this machine. Uh, and you'll notice that in this case, we have a little bit of proud uh, area right here. So this is standing a little bit higher than it should be. Um, by having it too tall, uh, the friction pad can actually rub against the PTFE tube instead of just the filament. So we want to make sure that we don't have proud areas like that. So I'm just going to come in with my blade here. And I'm just going to kind of trim those down. Just like that. So we have... Nothing standing up too tall. There, that's a little bit better. So now I don't have it standing up as far as it was before. Um, again, a little bit is uh, imperfection is quite all right. Uh, you just don't want it above the halfway point uh, because the friction arm will come in here and it will press up against that and push it up. And you don't want the friction arm actually hitting the PTFE tube. You only want this flat surface hitting the actual filament as it's going through. Um, so. That's what that looks like when it's properly done. We're going to do two of these just like this. Once those are done, we're going to take our small 8 millimeter screws. We're going to insert them into the two openings here. So there's one here and one here. And we're going to screw on our T-nuts. But we need to actually drive the screw through the back side here. So right now, the nut's in the front. And there might be a little bit of filament in the way from the printer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our longer screws our silver screws, and we're going to screw them in from the front side. And we're just going to hold this in our hand, and, and we're going to turn it with the 2.5 millimeter. And what that's going to do is that's going to push through the screw all the way through the back side. Once that's pushed through, um, we can actually go ahead and remove the screw. And what that just did is that opened up a channel all the way through the back side that you can now screw into. So if I screw this in, I can now screw it from the, this side, and you'll see that it'll go all the way through with no problem. 
you can also drop your rinse that way. Okay, so now that we have that in there, let's go ahead and remove the silver one, and we'll do it to the other. Again, it's all the way through. Now that it's through, we can simply remove it. So we have the green one. Now your tea nuts are might be all different colors. Uh, in the beta kits, we just all, used all kinds of random colors. Uh, in fact, some of your beta kits are actually uh, interesting in that the colors that we selected were just some random filaments that we were testing. Uh, so for example, this piece right here was actually printed with the chameleon. Uh, so it actually does have a color change in it. And this filament right here is actually a color changing filament. This particular um, is either blue or red. I don't remember which one this is. Um, but it will change color based off of temperature or UV. In this case, it looks like a UV uh, because it, my hand isn't changing its temperature. The extruder uh, is also made from a color changing filament. In this case, it's, uh, it's blue because of the temperature, but watch what happens when I hold this up to the light. There you can see it's turned to a lighter shade of. So, so my light is a lot hotter. So there you can see it's uh, changed its color. So we actually are using chameleon stuff for the chameleon color changer. So we're going to go ahead and insert this one last screw or nut into this uh, T-nut here. And just take that in and I like to press it from both sides just to make sure that it's nice and flat. Again, we'll screw in our longer screw. I just use the longer one. It's a little easier to get to, a little easier to hold on to. All right, so that's all the way through. So I'm using the stock tool that came with the Creality printer, uh, but you don't have to do that. In fact, I happen to have a, a better alternative right here. I have a 2.5 millimeter, um, basically screwdriver hand screwdriver. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and insert, insert a screw, and we'll go ahead and thread this on and then I'm going to use the screwdriver to drive it in and there it's already attached so that's just exactly where we want that we'll do the other one the same way Uh, it appears I did not actually run the green one through. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. That's better. There we go, we have that in there as well. Now I have two T-nuts installed. We're gonna build two just like this. So we have, this will go uh, onto the printer like this, and these will go into the uh, 2020 rail at the top. We'll go ahead and do the same thing for this other one. And there we go. So now we have 
both of the uh, friction rails done. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the friction pad onto the friction arm here. Um, and the way we're going to do this is very simple. We're just going to use our supplied cutters here. And we're just simply going to lay that against that and cut and cut. Voila. Now that we have that, we just pull the backing off the sticker. Be careful. This stuff is called very high bond tape. And they really mean that. This is Gorilla Tape. So once it's on there, it's going to be on there for a while. Okay, so that's what that looks like. We have our friction arm on. A friction pad on our friction arm. It should be roughly level. It doesn't have to be perfectly level. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to see how this goes up into here, and this will move back and forth across. So that's, that's how that's going to grab the filament. The next thing to prepare is the two screw holes here. We're going to use our 16 millimeter screws and we're just going to screw them in from the back side here. Now I typically will start this by hand. Screw that in just like that. Do the same thing with the other one. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and run that all the way through. And I just want to run it all the way through so that we make sure we have it threaded completely through. Just like that. And we'll do the same thing with the other side. Just like that. So now we have our friction arm done. It just needs to be installed. The last part that we're going to go ahead and set up is this for, uh, this uh, um, drive <laughs> the, the Y-splitter and drive mechanism. Um, and all we need to do is actually to put in uh, one of our 16 millimeter screws right into this uh, hole here. Again, start it by hand and then run it all the way down through. We're going to run it all the way to the bottom. And it's going to do, it's going to have a little bit of friction force on it. Uh, but once it breaks through, you'll feel it. So here it's, it's already broken through. Um, and I'm just going to run it all the way down and then back up. When we run these down, sometimes the screw heads are a little larger than the, and so once it runs through, the screw heads might tend to break off the little pieces on the corners here. Uh, that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, maybe in the next version, I'll actually make that a little bit more solid. Uh, but it doesn't hurt anything at all. So there you can actually see the color changing. The screw, as I was screwing through it, actually heated up the area. And you can see the white area instead of the blue area. That's kind of a cool effect there. And of course, where I'm touching it is much warmer. So the color is changing there as well. OK, so uh, next we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for these holes. We're just going to take a screw um, and run it through. just to make sure that those are threaded. Makes this a little bit easier to install. So all, all you have to do is stand proud a couple millimeters and we know that it's good enough uh, some of these you can see are they're actually a larger fit than the rest of it, so it doesn't take much. It was already mostly down in there already. It's just the uh, ballooning out on the bottom, the elephant feet that are kind of preventing the screws from going through freely. So we'll do this one last hole. Uh, this hole here is actually for the extruder arm itself, uh, so it's going to be. Uh, but a little bit tighter. We need to have a, a lot of force holding it in compared to the other two that are just really just positioning it. There we go. So we're through on that. So now that we're through on all of those, oops, go ahead and put this, this long screw, the 16 millimeter screw, back into the top hole here.
All right. So this screw is through. We'll go ahead and leave these out for now. These are actually easy to put in once this is actually installed on the printer. Um, again, we have our PTFE connectors. We have our two friction uh, tubes with their T-nuts on the back. We have the PTFE tube inside with the connectors on the ends. And we have our uh, friction arm with the friction pad and the two screws for mounting. So the next step is let's go ahead and install this in the printer.